Hey, all you Lord of the Rings strategy battle games, Middle Earth role playing fans, and just Lord of the Ring fans in general. Welcome back to Lands of Middle Earth. I'm your host, Roman Dasel. Today, going to be doing something a little different. Going to be answering a question that's been plaguing a lot of people is that uh, how big was Sauron's army during the Battle of the Black Gate? Like, what was the actual number, roughly? And the answer actually can be found within Lord of the Rings in an ambiguous way. Now, it's not a perfect answer. There's no black and white answer. It's, it's a gray area, but we can get a rough estimate. But in order to do that, we need to go all the way back to Minas Tirith and the events on March 16th, ah, shortly after the Battle of Pelennor Fields. So on that date, March 16th, there was a debate of the Lords of the West, which basically meant Gandalf called a meeting with Aragorn, Aomer and Prince Imrahil, as well as the Sons of Elrond. So those six guys got together and decided that they should make an assault on the Black Gate. Gandalf wanted to do this mainly to draw attention away from Frodo, who was probably somewhere, you know, was already within Mordor and needed to get to Mount Doom. So it draws Sauron's attention away from Mount Doom. Also, it empties Sauron's land so that Frodo has an easier time crossing. Because Gandalf knows that he went through the pass of Sir Kirith Ungol and up the Hidden Stairs. So they went through that pass. So Gandalf knows that Frodo's up there somewhere and needs to help him. So they make the dis decision. Now they also decide, this is where the numbers come in. How many men are they going to send? So for this, I'm going to use the counters for my game War and Peace had this for years since the 90s and I played it a lot so but they're colorful counters and they help do things but first so we got Aragorn I'm using Napoleon for Aragorn the volt's gonna be Gandalf because he was a good organizer Solt will be Imrahil and Russian Bagration will be Aomer so you got your principal, four principal commanders. The Sons of Elrond probably have loads of battle experience, but no experience leading large armies. So they're kind of useless in that sense. Legolas and Gimli, despite being princes of royal lines, aren't even invited to this meeting. So they're just there. They're almost like the comic relief. So they make the decision. So in terms of numbers... The general idea is that they're going to invite battle, but not be serious about it. It's a, it's bait to spring a trap, call forth Sauron's hidden forces. So they're not bringing a ton, a total, a ton of men out here. In fact, they're going to leave the city better defended than it was when this, when the siege of Minas Tirith began. So Amr, his job is to find 500 of his best cavalry. So each, each marker is, is in hundreds. And he's going to find 500 infantry. That's the Rohirrim contingent. A thousand con Rohirrim. That still leaves about roughly 3,000 Rohirrim to guard the city. So Aomer lost a third of his army in the siege of Minas Tirith in the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Not bad. But they lost more horses than anything else. So that's the first number we know of. We know there are a thousand Rohirrim. Next up... Aragorn is to find 2,000 men from those he gathered in the south. So from the, from the, black, from the black ships, the, the fleet of corsairs that he, that he took at Pelarger and filled with soldiers from the south. So his job is to find 2,000 southerners. Now Aragorn doesn't really have all that much experience with these people because he just met them. But he's got the street cred. Which is why they're following him. Aragorn's got... He's already helped the Rohirrim win a huge battle at Helm's Deep. He's also gone through the Pass of Dead, which is no mean feat. Called the Army of the Dead to scare the bejesus out of the, uh, the Corsairs of Umbar and the Haradrim. Helped win a couple of important victories and retook and took over the... Uh, retook Pelarger and 
capture the Black Fleet. So he's got a lot of street cred. So he can get 2,000 men easily. Prince Imrahil is to find 3,500. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and the other 500 are going to be the city guard. So royal guardsmen. So these guys would be more elite troops. There's his 3,500. And then riding with the sons of Elrond, leading this little group, is going to be another 500 cavalry. So 6,000 men of Gondor are going to the, on this little excursion. With 1,000 Rohirrim, that's 7,000 men. 1,000 cavalry, 6,000 infantry. So those are the numbers we know about. And remember, I'm using them in the hundreds because that's the easiest way to do it. And Prince Imrahil, he jests that 7,000 is, is, is about the same number that Gondor used to use in its vanguard of its armies in the, in the days of its power. So a Gondorian army was probably like 35,000 men back in the day. Okay, so while they're gathering their forces and getting, getting ready for this grand adventure, the map's going a little crooked here, there's still one more problem. There is a force, a host, or a force of Easterlings and Orcs holding the Amundin area. This was a host that issued from the Black Gate and came up against Carandros, which is right here. Took, they took Carandros, crossed into Anorian, and they, their job was to block the Rohirrim from coming to the aid of Gondor. In which they, the commander did a piss poor job and is going to lose his head if he ever gets back to uh, Mordor alive. They're sitting there still after the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. They didn't really help out. And now they're stranded. So Elfhelm, with 3,000 riders of Rohan, and probably some Gondorian cavalry as well, is going to clear them out of Anorian, which he does on March 17th. He clears them out and scatters them, and most of them probably head back to Carandros, which is important. So he does that. So on March 18th, Aragorn leaves Minas Tirith and heads for Osgiliath. They cross over to Osgiliath. Elfhelm is in charge of the riders of Rohan, and even though Faramir is inca incapacitated right now, there's still Angbor the Fearless and some other leaders in Minas Tirith. So we know that. Angbor the Fearless arrives with 4,000 men of the south by road, probably around the 17th of March, if not the 18th. So they pass through Old Osgiliath on the eastern side, where there are men setting up hasty works of defense. So Gondor has already reclaimed East Osgiliath in this, in this skirmish as, you know, to slow down any enemy forces. But they press on. And they don't the whole army doesn't quite make it to the crossroads, but at nightfall, the cavalry press on and take the crossroads in the first day. So by morning of the 19th, the whole army's at the crossroads, and they go to the Minas Morgul Vale. Minas Morgul is pretty silent be, simply because the host of Minas Morgul was destroyed, as was the host of East Osgiliath and the Haradrim host. So that's three big armies that Sauron lost. Now, a host could be anywhere from forty to 60,000 in Tolkien's world <clears throat> for a Mordorian force. So Sauron's lost a lot of his best, a lot of troops already. The Haradrim have been shattered, as well as the Easterlings from Minas Morgul and East Osgiliath, as well as countless orcs. All right, so they come... They go to the Morgul Vale. Imrahil has the bright idea. Hey, let's besiege Minas Morgul and destroy it. Not going to happen. Because of the horror of what's still inside. No one has been inside Minas Morgul in, in almost a thousand years. And then Sauron could always bring another, fresh forces over the Kirith Ungol Pass. 
And Gandalf says, no, that's not what where they want him to be looking. Because Frodo's dancing around in that area. So Gandalf squashes that idea. Immerhill's gotten bitch slapped. And they move on. But first, they make the first in a deduction. Now it doesn't explicitly say how many they leave, but later on when they come up to the Black Gate, it's, it's implied that Aragorn has already left many men at the crossroads. And for that, they choose archers to walk, to hide in the bushes around the, the crossroads and as a uh, warning. So if that Sauron does send a force across the uh, Kirith Ungol passes towards Minas Morgul and get behind him or to attack Minas Tirith from behind while they're away, they want at least some warning. So they leave some, leave many men behind, mainly archers. Now, for me, that could be a company. That could be anywhere from three to 500 men. I'm going to consider it 300. This is just my own personal opinion. They leave 300 men, mostly Gondor, all Gondorians, at the crossroads. So now he's got 6,700 men. Make sense? Now it is a hundred miles from the crossroads to the Moranin. And they're going to get there in roughly five days. And then camp out on the last day. So they set out on the 20th and marched through North Athelion. Now while they're doing that, marching up, the force of orcs and Easterlings that are sitting on Carandros, what's left of them, they're sitting around trembling with fear. Because they're in danger of getting cut off. And Sauron's probably not too happy with their performance at this point. So this is my uh, this is my theory on this, is that the forces holding Carandros crossed over and tried to set an ambush at the defile, at this defile up here. So the bulk of the forces that are left on Carandros are there. At this defile. This is the same place that Faramir ambushed the Haradrim in the two towers in the Herbs and chapter when Faramir runs into Frodo. It's also the same defile that Prince Erner of Gondor led the southern southern army and what he could of the North Army and destroyed the Wayne Rider invasion in the twentieth century of the Third Age. This is when King Narmesel went up and with the Northern Army with his two sons, the one he didn't know was there. And they got beat badly in the Dagger Lad. Wayne Riders invaded Ithilien and Aaron are gathering what he could, surprised them in this defile probably and destroyed them. So that's a bit of extra history there. So they get up to the defile, but they, they're, they're warned by scouts like Mablung, who was one of the rangers of Ithilien. And so they use cavalry to swing wide and they catch them, catch them by surprise and scatter them. It doesn't tell you how many men they lost. Their losses were probably minimal because these orcs and Easterlings are so demoralized and, and scared shitless that, and they scattered. What was left of them probably went back to Carandros. Others fled into the mountains, depending who you are. It doesn't say how many men that Aragorn lost. Probably one to 200 men, we're not sure. We can't, it was very light. It wouldn't decrease the size of each company very very much. So I'm not taking any men out. Because I don't know how many Rohirrim and how many Gondorans died. So we don't know about that. So they keep marching for another two days until they reach the edge of Four Lithian. These guys have been marching like 20 miles a day. That's a pretty good pace. Once they get there and they see the desolation of the Dagger Lad, a lot of faint-hearted men lose faith. A lot of, there's quite a few to lose faith. Because remember, these men are from the west fold of Rohan or from the Anphalus of Gondor, and they, Mordor is but a rumor. They have no idea what more, they've heard of Mordor, but never seen it up close. Not like the men of Anorian. So Gandalf, instead of bitching the mountain and telling them to give their balls a tug, he, he feels pity. And he gives leave for the faint hearted to leave. Now, some of these guys, they do give their balls a tug and decide to stay. But a fair number go off. And for that, but before they do that, Aragorn gives them a mission. 
He says, if you can, work your way southwest to Carandros and take the island if you can. Now, again, we don't know the exact numbers of how many actually went, but we're going to say somewhere in the vicinity of 900 for the purposes of this exercise. So 900 mean men leave and head for Carandros. Which they do take. It doesn't explicitly say it, but I'm pretty sure they do take it. 900 sounds like a good number because anything less, even with a minimal force on Carandros, wouldn't be able to take that island. It'd be hard. It'd be difficult. But these guys, emboldened by something they, the man, something manly that they can do, to over, will do that. And because they're ashamed of their performance to this point, they will be emboldened. And the Easterly and Orcs left on Carandros will be definitely weakened and also demoralized. So that shouldn't be a problem. So in Lord of the Rings it says that they go, they go into the uh, Dagger Lab with less than 6,000. So already I've taken out 1,200 1, men from Aragorn's army. Let's say, give or take. So he's going into battle with 5,800 men. That's what I'm estimating. Could be 5,700. It's more than 5,500. Because, or Tolkien would have said how many. But they're less than 6,000, so 5,800 sounds like a good idea. Now we're going to change maps real quick here. We don't need this stuff anymore. We don't need the Carandro stuff anymore. We're going to use the map that's found in Daggerlad and the Dead Marshes because it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty complete. And this is what we are looking at now. So Aragorn and his buddies are, and the host of the West are out in the Dagger Lad. Now instead of following the road towards the Black Black Gates and the Towers of the Teeth, which would leave them exposed to ambushes from the mountains, they go around. They come up around and approach it from the northwest. So they get to these two little hills here, which are. Basically where Frodo, Sam, and Gollum were hiding out. It's the same approach. There are two big heaps, two hills that dominate the plain, and they are piled up with rubble, lar large rubble, from passages and mines out of Mordor, tunneling, orcs tunneling in. So this is where Gant Aragorn sets up for the battle. The night before they had had problems with unseen walkers and wolves howling and stuff like that. Interestingly enough, Sauron never uses war wolves or wolf riders. Now, I know Peter Jackson put that in his movie, but in the book, it's never implied that Sauron uses uh, wolves. Had he used wolves to track down Frodo, Frodo would be screwed. But no, they use a tracker orc who can sniff the ground. Riders was a northern, was a misty mountain thing concept. Wolves might have been bigger up there. And wargs, obviously. So before he goes to the Black Gate, Aragorn decides and gets his forces ready. He occupies the two big hills. Imra Hill and Aomer will occupy one hill, and Aragorn and Gandalf will be on the other hill. Aragorn will also be more to the center of the line, and they chose that area because in front of them is a great mire. So kind of like swamp, really swampy ground of muck, deep mud, and pools, and deep pools that smell bad because this stuff is coming out of the dead marshes. And it will act like a great moat. So give them some kind of protection. And then they go bang on the doors of the Black Gate. They, call, they challenge Sauron, which is why they're there. Sauron sends his ambassador. They have a few words, the mouth of Sauron. Which I thought they did a pretty cool job in the Peter Jackson movie. He looked pretty cool. Nothing goes right, and Sauron springs the trap. He took the bait. He thinks Aragorn has the ring, and it's his best chance to get it back. Sauron, for all his wisdom, is definitely not a smart guy. Nobody would march up the Black Gate with that many men. It'd be suicidal, even if you had the ring of power. So now comes the question, how many men did they have? And the answer, again, is in Tolkien. Tolkien tells you. So when the Black Gate opens, 
Drums rolled, fires leaped out, the great doors of the Black Gates swung wide open. Out of it streamed a, streamed a great host as swiftly as swirling mountains when a slice gate is filled. Okay. Then dust rose, smoldering from the air as from nearby there marched up an army of Easterlings that waited for the signal in the shadows of the arid lithu beyond the further tower. So, we know that there is a force coming out of Sirithungal, and we know that there is a force of Easterlings out here using Charles of Austria, Archduke of Austria, and Blücher from Prussia. Blücher is a pretty good guy, so it's kind of bad to use him for works. So we know that's happening. Down from the hills on either side of the Moran and Port Orcs and Numeral. So soon all about the Grey Mounds where they stood, forces ten times and more than ten times their match would ring them. So that tells you right there, that's, that's the key. So one host is ten times their number. The other host is times ten plus. That's how I read that passage. Two hosts, two numbers. Ten times and ten times plus. So if you figure that Aragorn has 5,800 men, then the, I'm guessing that the Easterling host, which would be the lesser of the two, is the times 10. So this time I'm using, so that's going to be 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 Easterling infantry, 8,000, 8,000 Easterling cavalry. The Easterlings would have had a great cavalry force as well. Simply because they're on the plains. The plains around Rune is a horse culture. The Wayne Riders, the Sagath, the Variags of Cond, they all would have been horsemen. Though there would have been a, most of them would have been infantry because they're cheaper. So that's the that's the one force, 58,000. The second host, which would comprise mostly of orcs, would be the one that's Plus, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I'm putting 55,000 orcs. And then I'm putting 5,000 Haradrim infantry. Because remember, the Haradrim were reinforced in the Black Gate. All right, so we have 5,000 Haradrim. He's got to remember that, I, that the Haradrim have been steadily reinforcing the Black Gate. Faramir intercepted one of their regiments. But other regiments probably got through, especially in the later stages <clears throat> or earlier. Faramir can't be everywhere at once. So we know that. And I'm going to give them 2,000 infantry. Or sorry. I'm going to give them 2,000. I'm going to give them 2,000 cavalry. So we have 7,000 Haradrim. And 55,000 orcs. For a grand total of 62,000. Outnumbered 10.7. Because Tolkien doesn't say they outnumber by times 11. He says times 10 plus. So we don't know the plus. I'm also going to throw in a company of 200 hill trolls. That are mentioned in there. I'm using that. That's, that's a 200, that yellow. Everything else is in thousands. We have our 58 and our 62, plus 200. So Aragorn is outnumbered 120,200 to 5,800. That's how badly he's outnumbered. Almost 21 to 1. Almost. So in reality, Aragorn and, and company should have been bowled right over. Because in the book, the trolls, they, the mire doesn't really slow them that much. They come bursting through because they're line brusters. And the orcs, because they can't get through, they start shooting arrows. Christ, 10,000, 5,000 orcish archers would just decimate Aragorn's army in a matter of minutes, within an hour. Which would have been the smartest thing to do, but then you could always pull back out of range. But, they, but the, battle, the other thing is, the battle doesn't actually last long. Because once the trolls come, Bar Baragon gets who's with the company of men from the city, gets gets hit by a troll. Pippin kills his troll and then gets crushed by the troll when he falls on him. Then someone says the eagles are coming. So the eagles arrive. We don't know how many eagles have come. Probably, a, probably a couple, 100, 200 would be a fair estimate. And they start battling with the Nazgul and start tearing into the army too. 
And then the Nazgul turn and flee because Frodo is now at Mount Doom and he's wrestling with Gollum for the ring. He put the ring on, claimed the ring for his own right in the middle of Mount Doom inside it. Sauron became aware and then Gollum started fighting with him and the Nazgul were trying to get there. But it was too late. Gollum bit the ring off Frodo's finger and started dancing on the edge like an idiot and then fell over. Ring destroyed. That was it. What happens afterwards? Sauron's presence is, gone, is lifted. Huge cata cataclysm. Earthquake. Destroys most of Mor Mordor. Like all the fortresses of Mordor collapse. Beridur is gone. The Black Gate is gone. The Towers of the Teeth crumble. Durthang is probably also gone as well as the Kerak Angren. And uh, the orcs, the trolls have lost all. The sunlight would be coming out. The, like the clouds would be dissip dissipating. The sunlight would be out. The trolls would be turning to stone or running for the hills. Same with the orcs running for their bull. The Easterlings would be all confused. And uh, the men of the West, Aragorn led them in serried ranks probably in a wedge formation to get carve their way through them and get out of the trap with cavalry on, coming out on each flank to harass them. Gandalf, meanwhile, took an eagle and, and headed for Mount Doom. Took the Lord of the Eagles, Gwalhar. Ah, Gwa so that is the number of troops that Sauron had at the Black Gate. That's my estimate. How many men did Aragorn lose at the Black Gate? Probably 2,000 to be able to... He lost probably a third of his force. Maybe less than half. Depending. The battle didn't last long. Maybe an hour. From the time the orcs arrived at the mirror and started shooting arrows to the, the time Gollum fell, in the, fell into the volcano of Mount Doom. So they got lucky. So like I said, that's my estimate for the numbers of troops that Sauron had with him. Or had waiting at at the Black Gate. Do you guys agree with my assessment? Um, let me know what your assessment was. What do you think? Does that sound right? Not sound right? Should there have been more? Should there have been less? Leave comments in the comment section. Until next time, this has been Roman Daisel. I am out of here.